Hello everyone, and it looks like Quad Spinner released an update for Geoglyph, something that, you know, I've been waiting for to see if they've been resolving anything. Uh, and in this one, it looks like they have improved the stability of Geoglyph, so the setup could not complete in some situations. This happened to me once. Geoglyph crashed when closing. This never happened to me. Rare crashes in World Machine. This happened to me all of the time. Uh, only when recording video, though, but uh, never when I, when I wasn't. And then speech recognition should be disabled on unsupported machines. So hopefully this uh, helps uh, you know fix some issues. And I guess we'll find out. Uh, it'll now restart. It should restart. Okay. So install. Well, okay. Well, not found. Uh, okay. Well, we'll manually do that. Okay, looks like it has finished installing, updating, so let's uh, test some things out. And now this was just, um, this was just released just seconds ago, right before I finished that last tutorial. I mean, I'm still, I, this is like the third video I recorded today, and that pop-up came up right when I was finishing up that video. So hopefully this improves a couple things. So the next one that we're going to talk about and this is all a tutorial just uh, you want to resume anything to, okay so okay no yes I mean I don't want it to use it um, so we ended on Perlin wave and now we're going to be talking about the Razor Ridge so this is a discovering video sorry I just wanted to you know give you guys a heads up that there was an update so maybe that fixed a few things um, so here is the Razor Ridge. So let's look at what this says. This says Razor Ridge generates extremely sharp rock formations. The unique razor edges can create interesting alien landscapes and other distinctive terrains. Compare results when using geoglyph modifiers Kill Spike or Peak Compact. For different output, try combining with other geoglyph devices such as Sandstone. So, interesting. Let's do exactly what it says. Let's do Kill Spike. That's my favorite one. And it does say kill spike. Okay, so we're gonna just we're gonna play with the settings first before we do that. So I am using the enhanced um, interface, so it does look a little bit different. I just wanted to give it a shot because I've been using the old interface instead, but I just kind of want to play with it. So here's the seed. Yay, fun stuff. Um, and this is something I wanted to talk about. These little lines right here that appear. Those are shadow copies or something like that. It sounds like a Naruto term. Uh, I can't remember what they call them, uh, but what it is is that these were the last, this is where you were at last. So you can just click on it and it, and you know um, where you're at before. So if you make a change and you're like, oh, well, that change wasn't very good. I want to go back to what I had before. You, you know exactly where it's at. So it just kind of saves your your place and then I believe if you hold control or something like that or alt and it's something I'll have to go back and look at it but that I just wanted to show you that so that I think that's pretty cool and then these are just the increments of the different options you have uh, and this is kinda like why I don't like using the new interfaces because it doesn't tell me what I'm changing right here and I don't I'm going to have to submit some stuff to them and be like, hey, by the way, when you're using the enhanced UI, I would really like it if you just give me the options that I'm changing. That'd be pretty cool. So I'm just going to turn it off for now because I thought that maybe they might have changed that, but they didn't. And I set it up to not use voice recognition, but for some reason it's still wanting to use it. So I don't know what's up with that either. Okay, so there's just the scale and the seed. Those were the only two options. So not much to see. Um, you can see the noise itself is doing its work, um, but you can just kind of play with the scale and and the seed. That's, that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and put sandstone out. And sandstone is a generator where is it maybe it's not a generator that's yeah, not it's a modifier so there's the modifier there's sandstone and let's do kills spike after 
and uh, let's just kind of look at the defaults, except for kill spike. I need to lower the defaults for that. Like maybe three. I like turning that all the way up and then turning that the actual amount down. Even that was too much. But you can kind of see what it does. Let's get rid of kill spike for the time being and sandstone, and let's just look at Razor Ridge itself. And this is kind of like what it does, and you're you're probably thinking to yourself, this is ugly, I will never use this. Look at the distortion right here. It's just a bunch of stuff going on, not looking good. Well, it's not supposed to be used by itself. It's supposed to be used with other generators so and modifiers. That's why they recommend using it with sandstone and with uh, kill spike and peak compact and all those great things. I'll keep those defaults and let's look at it with just kill spike. And now you can start seeing, okay, well this looks a little bit better. You, know, you don't have those stupid sharp edges. I mean there's still some, um, but we can go in and adjust kill spike if we wanted. And let's go ahead and put another modifier on it. So let's, uh, instead of sandstone, stop using voice recognition. <clears throat> let's look at a different one. Let's look at super terracing. No, I don't want to do that. We'll come back to that. Sorry. Um, it'll be a good one to use. Eh, let's just go with sandstone. We already saw the, the shapes, but we'll just play with this, the sandstone options. And I already did a video on sandstone, so I'm not going to go over it again. But I'll, I'll see what happens if we turn the stratification up and the age. Let's see what we get. There we go. Let's just build that. So far, no crashes. Knocking on wood, but so far, no crashes. And you can uh, you can see that there is terracing going on and, and whatnot. So these are some interesting looking mountains. Weird rock formations going on and whatnot. So that's that's interesting. Well, that is Razor Ridge, and I'm pretty sure we can uh, mix this with something and get some cool looking things, but uh, since this is just a discovering video, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Next one is Ridge, which I already talked about. Then there's Strata Perlin, which is probably just a Perlin fractal with Strata, but let's read it anyways. A different take on the stock standard Perlin fractal. Strata Perlin is a very powerful ground fractal that can be used on its own or layered with other generators. The Perlin-esque output is stratified with pattern matching formulae to generate realistic slabs of minerals ready for erosion. This device is extremely fast to build, even at high resolutions, or ultra high resolutions. So that's good. Let's look at the scale here. Look like it's, it's a pretty good looking fractal. I'll play with stratification a little bit. There's the equalization, which it's just using an equalizer node, I bet, to just bring in and out some of those details. And then there's the seed. So just your typical fractal. Stratification just looks like it warps it a little bit, adding and subtracting some stratification. Uh, so that's good. Let's look at it. Just, oh, yeah, that that's super quick. Let's say it took like less than a second. Let's see what happens if we build it at 4097, which is the highest I can build at for these. Oh, wow. High resolution, built in about, I'm going to guess, 15 seconds. Nope, a little bit longer. So it does build really quick. Okay, so maybe 17 seconds tops, 18 seconds. Not bad for that high of a resolution. And this is what we have. Stratification, some Perlin noise, so on and so forth. And then we can do our full resolution snapshot and you can see all of that fine detail. Wow, there's just so much. And you can see the differences when I even just change it a little bit. So there's that. Let's go ahead and erode this, but I'm not gonna do it at this high of a resolution. I'll do it at that resolution. And there's the differences between that other resolution height and the other one. So let's build this. And that's the difference. This is still really, really detailed stuff. 
So maybe NeoFlow will work now. Yay! One of my favorite macros, and it finally works. Um, not finally, it has worked for a while. It's just in that last video, it didn't want to for some reason, but now it does. That's good. So we're using NeoFlow to erode it. And this is what we get. Um, and we might need to add another form of erosion, so just like the natural erosion here. We'll go ahead and connect that to there, and we'll combine the two. And I'll just keep it at average and build. Oh, well, you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to change this to good with terraces. There we go. And you can see that the Stratoperlin is just really fast. Okay, so now we have our uh, normal erosion and our uh, neo flow, so that looks really good. That was a really quick get together there. So Stratoperlin, fast, simple to use, and looks great. Good. Uh, Talus, we'll get into that. I like Talus. Talus is, um, when you look at mountains, Talus is that little rock and dirt and sedimentary stuff at the end at the bottom of a mountain um, where rock is eroding away and breaking so like right here that is what talus is um, and right here is where you can change the scale of it very small or large amounts and we have alpha seats here let's see if they fix the uh, nope they didn't randomly change or fix that N random seed weird problem and this would probably look really good with um, thermal weathering which is what that's supposed to do uh, is bring out those taluses as you can see here there's a talus depth and talus age and this is the talus mask so if you wanted to um, use the mask here to colorize your your talus erosion which this probably already has thermal weathering built into it um, you can definitely use the mask to bring out that data. And this is what it looks like, just normal. Maybe the options I have are a little bit m not enough. But let's go ahead and add a filter equalizer to the mask, and we'll see what the mask looks like. There's the mask. So it looks like... The white area is your talusing, and that's just around the edges there. So we can bring those in or out, and we can use this to maybe colorize it. Maybe. We'll find out. We're going to use moss and granite. And then let's put out a overlay view. Connect that to this, connect this to that. And now we'll be able to build that, and I'll show you where the talus is taking place. Right here is where the talus is taking place. Right here, anywhere this coloration is occurring. Um, we can add a colorizer to this, and we can make this a different color, so like maybe something that is different. Let's just do drainage. Uh, we can't do it with this. We'll have to use it with <clears throat> a combiner. Maybe. I'm still trying to understand the whole colorizer and output thing because I know this can output to a bitmap but it has a hard time with anything else. So there we go and nope, can't even do that. Well, we can use a color generator. Bang. And then we can use a combiner. But the combiner won't oh wait, look at that. It does combine to that. Just wouldn't with a stupid piece of crap colorizer and we'll just make this green and no I don't want you 
Now we'll make it purple. And it looks like that's not going to show us what we want. So we need it connected to that. Then we need this to connect to something else. But in any case, you can see I'm colorizing based off the mask, uh, the talus is here, and that's pretty much what it does. So that's talus. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> Last one of the generators is the thermal shatter. And this premium macro was created from years of field research in various desert settings. Thermal shatter generates a harsh desert environment with canyons, valleys, and realistic thermal erosion. The resulting terrains can be turned into the bolt turned to bolt be both real life and fantastical. Even the most wildly imaginative output of thermal shatter is realistic and believable. For some reason I thought it said unbelievable. Anyways, scale. Everybody knows what that does. Shatter. It's really hard to tell exactly what it does with that. And there's fusion, which I've already shown you what fusion does. Um, warping. Oh, yeah, that's just going to warp the environment. Preserve. Oh, wow, that changes it quite a bit. You can kind of see what it does. I'm not 100% sure exactly what its its textbook um, meaning is, but you can kind of see what it does there. Let's go ahead and build that. And those are pretty high values, I would say. And yeah, that looks good. So there's probably a little bit of thermal erosion going on here. They have the uh, flow map here. So let's go ahead and add a equalizer to that. It doesn't look like there's much data there. Let's hook up an erosion node instead. And we'll just use good with terraces and we'll build it. And yeah, you can still get some really good looking results here as well. Uh, mix this with NeoFlow and you'll have a nice looking landscape. This would be a good, this would be a cool looking map to play on in a video game. Um, anyways, that takes care of all of the generators. Uh, I did go through a few modifiers, but not all of them, so I will make another uh, a video starting with the modifiers. I want to thank you for watching this video. Please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. If you want to know anything else about any other 3D application, please feel free to ask. You can make, and you can even post on uh, or send contact me at www.pwndesign.com. Thank you, and have a nice day.